Hi everyone. Um, over the past few weeks, um, I've been to a couple of really, really good library book sales. So um, I didn't really think I'd be doing book haul videos since uh, a lot of people uh, do them better than I do. But since I found so many good books uh, in a pretty short period of time, I thought that I would do one. I have, oh, maybe, you know, 15, 20 books here that I bought over the past few weeks. So I'm just going to share them with you guys and see what you think. If you've read them, if you have any opinions about them, if you want to share, comment, whatever. Um, I appreciate it all. Um, this first one, actually, I didn't even buy at a library book sale. I paid um, something I almost never do, which is a uh, full price for it. But um, I've never found it uh, anywhere else. So, um, you know, I, I, I needed to have it. This is... Uh, Richard J. Evans's The Third Reich at War, which I paid, as you can tell by the price right there, uh, $11.99 for. And um, this is the third book in his uh, trilogy of, of, of history books about Germany's part in World War II. And uh, this is specifically about Germany and how they fought battles and uh, sort of the, the formation of, of their military structure, um, all of that good stuff. Um, the, the first two are um, about other aspects of World War II, sort of like the, uh, the building up of the Nazi party and uh, the coming to power of Hitler as, as chancellor and all of that stuff. But um, I'm really looking forward to reading this. It might be a while because, of course, I want to read them in... Um, in the order that he came out with them, and this is number three. So uh, it might be several months or several years before I get to this, but um, I needed to have it. Uh, next is uh, the set of books that I got from the library book sale that I went to three weeks ago today. And I have, let's see, six books from that book sale. Six, seven, excuse me. Uh, the first one is The Making of England, uh, 55 BC to 1399 by C. Warren Holster. Um, this looks to be a, a Barnes and Noble imprint. Uh, it has someone's name inside of it, um, which uh, usually would prevent me from buying the book, but uh, you know, if, if it's just a dollar or two, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll buy it anyway. It's um, actually, obviously, you can tell from the, from the title, quite a bit of history packed into a relatively short book, you know, 220 pages or so, and, uh, you know, 14 and a half centuries worth of history. It looks interesting, so I got it. Uh, the next one is um, uh, The Russian Revolution. Uh, 1917 to 1932 by uh, Sheila Fitzpatrick. Uh, Sheila Fitzpatrick is um, a history of a uh, professor of history at UT Austin, which is I, I'm in San Antonio, so um, I've been to the campus a couple of times, and I recognized her name, so um, I wanted to pick this up. I've read a couple of things about um, Russian history in the recent past, including. Uh, Lenin's Private War by Leslie Chamberlain, which I posted a review of on this channel. You can go check that out if you're interested. Uh, it's about the um, the exile of, of uh, several intellectuals, uh, several dozen intellectuals actually, that uh, Lenin sent out of the country when he came to power uh, relatively soon after the revolution. So this is uh, basically the first 15 years after the revolution. Again, a, a relatively short book, um, 160 pages. Uh, this next one is uh, An American Childhood by Annie Dillard. Um, Annie Dillard is always a, a writer I've heard quite a bit about. Um, several of my friends have spoken very highly of her, uh, but I've never read anything by her. so. I picked this up and read the first couple of pages and was intrigued enough to spend a dollar on it. So I got it. 
Next up is Kate Millett's, there we go, right there, Sexual Politics. Um, this was probably one of those books that came out 40 or so years ago, which really did a lot to insert feminism, especially American feminism, into literary studies and literary theory. Um, she, uh, she talks about uh, the sexual revolution, of course, which was then very new uh, during the early 70s. Uh, she talks about uh, D.H. Lawrence, I believe. Uh, it says here on the inside cover that she talks about Norman Mailer, Henry Miller, Sigmund Freud, Freud and, uh, and Eric, Eric Erickson. So this looked interesting. Um, not the newest copy, but um, new enough for a couple of dollars. Next up is Origins Reconsidered by Richard Leakey and Roger Lewin. Um, this is about the, uh, the origins of, um, you know, basically the, the evolutionary origins of the human being. Uh, the, the subtitle of the book is In Search of What Makes Us Human. And, um, of course, I, I recognize Richard Leakey's name for, uh, uh, for being from the famous Leakey family of anthropologists. And um, it, what I know about physical anthropology, I could f probably fit in a thimble, uh, which is one of the reasons why I picked this up, uh, because it looks interesting, and it's by someone whose name... Uh, you know, holds a bit of water in the field, so I thought it would be good to read. Uh, for those of you who are interested in political biographies, you probably know uh, the name of Robert Caro, The Years of Lyndon Johnson. This one is The Path to Power. Um, I don't know which volume this is. Um, it might be one or two or possibly even, it's, I don't think it's three. But um, this is this is one of the first two volumes. I got another one at a library book sale several months ago, and he just came out with volume four, uh, with which I think takes him through the presidency. And I think he's planning a fifth one, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the speed at which he's going, um, he better get get it written fast. He's been working quite, uh, for quite a while on these books. And you can tell they are quite um, chunky. So <laughs> uh, they're averaging, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine hundred pages of a book. But um, I definitely want to eventually work my way through all of these. And uh, the last one I got from the first book sale that I went to was uh, Howard and Sacker's A History of the Jews in America. Again, another chunky, deckled book edge. Um, this one is a thousand pages long, but um, it's in beautiful condition. No marking or dog eared pages or anything like that. And the, uh, the subject is something I'm really interested in and, and know less than I probably should about. So I got that for a couple of dollars. right here and then I went to another book sale this morning actually got up early to go to it and these are the books that I got there one two three four five six seven eight nine books the first one is Stanley Weintraub's biography of Queen Victoria um, I recognize Stanley Weintraub's name he um, he writes quite a bit about um, 19th century history. He's written a book about um, George Bernard Shaw called Private Shaw and Public Shaw. Um, he wrote one, he wrote a biography of Aubrey Beardsley, uh, another one of Whistler, uh, of Whistler the, the painter, and another uh, group biography uh, called uh, The Four Rossettis, a Victorian biography. 
but uh, I mostly just recognized his name. I uh, didn't know about this book at all until I saw it. Um, but um, nice book, um, probably one that's not still in print. So I got this for a dollar. Next up, Mildred Pierce by James M. Kane. Um, probably recognize it at least from the uh, from the movie that was made maybe a year or two ago. But uh, this novel was written, I think, in the early '40s uh, by James Kane. Um, never got to read it, and uh, I'm glad this was sort of reissued with the uh, nice new um, sort of Hollywood-looking cover and everything. Um, I'd like to read the book and then and then go watch the, the production and see how they compare. I'm actually uh, planning on uh, reading Cloud Atlas, uh, since they're making a movie of that too, obviously, and then uh, going to watch that in the theater and maybe doing sort of a dual review here for you guys. Uh, next up, The Thurber uh, Carnival by uh, James, Thurbel, James Thurber. And it is uh, basically a collection of, I don't think it's all of his stories, but it's many of them. And of course, uh, one of my favorite parts of James Thurber is the, is the wonderful little illustrations that you get. Let's see if I can just show you one right here. Sort of. I'm left-handed with a right-handed brain, so that doesn't work out very well. But um, all of these funny, satirical, uh, cute little short stories with um, intermittent illustrations are very nice. Another dollar. Uh, next up is uh, a novel by uh, Jean Paul Sartre, uh, Nausea. You know, one of those sort of essential uh, sort of uh, books on existentialism, a novel. Um, saw it, 50 cents. It's one of the, uh, one of the books by uh, Sartre that I don't have. I, I have um, Being in Nothingness and um, a couple of others. But I didn't remember having this. I haven't actually looked. Don't remember having it. So um, I bought it. Uh, next up is Down There on a Visit by Christopher Isherwood. Um, the only thing I've ever read by Christopher Isherwood was uh, The Single Man, which they also made a movie out of a few years ago. And. Um, I have uh, the Berlin stories too, which I haven't looked at, but I liked The Single Man so much that um, I thought I would get this, even though I'd uh, never heard of it and don't know anything about it. Uh, the synopsis on the back looks interesting. Another 50 cents. Next up is another novel uh, by Irvin D. Yalom, When Nietzsche Wept. And the subtitle is A Novel of, of Obsession. This is a novel um, by Yalom. He's, he's written a couple of other novels called uh, The Schopenhauer Cure and Love's Executioner. Um, he's actually a psychiatrist, um, a professor emeritus of psychiatry at Stanford. And I have uh, one of his, his nonfiction works. It's called um, Existential psychiatry or existential psychology it's a gigantic book um, but it basically talks about um, existential concerns and how those sort of overlap with uh, psychiatric and, and psychological concerns and how how the two can sort of complement one another and I thought that you know if that's his academic background um, you know his fiction might be sort of interesting to read so I picked this up for 50 cents Uh, quite a while ago at Barnes & Noble, um, I picked up volume one of this, which is uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's The Complete Sherlock Holmes, volume one, 
and I found volume two, uh, hardback for a dollar. So um, I bought that. This one uh, includes, let's see, most of the short stories. Um, the, uh, the novels or the novellas are in volume one. You know, how the basket mills and all of that good stuff. Um, this is most of the short stories. But I think there's only two volumes, so I think I have all of, uh, all of Sherlock Holmes now. Next up is uh, a book by Rachel Maddow. The only book by Rachel Maddow that I know of. Um, called Drift, The Unmooring of American Pol uh, Military Power. She came out with this um, earlier this year, maybe, maybe late last year, no, this year, 2012, and it's basically about um, how American military power sort of experiences this phenomenon we call drift, which it just sort of gets bigger and bigger, and, and the missions change, and they just sort of become these protean things instead of these sort of uh, neat, well-defined uh, uh, military um, missions. I don't really know in detail the, the thesis of the book, but that's what I got from looking at it. Um, I'm really interested in this. I'm actually um, a big fan of her show. I think she's really smart and, and incisive and and, and talks about interesting stories in interesting ways. So um, when I do read this, I'll definitely be posting a review of it. Okay, last book from the book sale, but then I actually have three more. So uh, this one is the complete stories of Truman Capote. And let's see, we have here, I guess they didn't name the uh, short story collections by by collection, but uh, it's it's all of the short stories in a beautiful hardcover with those decal edges again, and uh, no writing or dog earring or anything it was a dollar, so I got that. About a week or so ago, I went to a bookstore, Half Price Books and got three more books, which I want to include in this collection because if I don't, um, I'll pro you'll probably never get to see them uh, unless I review them. So this one is um, called The Ethnographer's Magic and Other Essays in the History of Anthropology by George W. Stocking, Jr. Uh, George, George Stocking writes mostly on the history of anthropology um, through you know, Franz Boas and uh, uh, Durkheim and, and, and other, other people like that, the structuralists, uh, and basically, um, I mean, it's, it's just really interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, what I know about anthropology, I said earlier, uh, was, was very little. I know a little bit more about this kind of stuff, like the theoretical side of anthrop anthropology, like the cultural side, um, as far as physical anthropology and uh, the evolutionary aspects of it, not as much. But um, this I'm really interested in too, and um, this was um, this certainly was not a dollar or two. It was probably six or seven dollars, but um, I was interested, so I got that. Just two more, I promise. I'm wrapping it up. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Early Modern England, 1485 to 1714, by Robert Buckholz and Newton Key. It kind of looks like a textbook, honestly, but um, you know, it, it covers such a wide swath of English history that um, it looked really interesting. And it was in good shape, so I bought it, and I like the pictures. So there. Last one. Uh, this one is uh, edited by uh, Gertrude Himmelfarb, 
It's called uh, The Spirit of the Age, Victorian Essays. And this is just a set of uh, Victorian... Uh, it's, it's a set of essays by uh, Victorian figures. Um, I'll just go through the list. Uh, you have uh, you know, Thomas Carlyle, John Stuart Mill, uh, Thackeray Dickens, um, John Ruskin, John Henry Newman, Matthew Arnold, I mean, Gladstone, Oscar Wilde. R really no new um, shocking names in there. But it's just uh, supposed to be a a collection about, uh, you know, Victorian times, the Victorian sort of ethos and what that was all about. By the way, um, if I'm not mistaken, Gertrude Himmelfarb is married to Irving Kristol and is the mother of Bill Kristol, the conservative political commentator. So um, that's an interesting little fact to report. Um, so there you go. I mean... Do you think I have enough to stay busy for a while? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I, it's obvious that, you know, probably most people who do this whole book reviewing and talking about books thing on YouTube buy books much, much, much faster than they can read them, and I'm certainly one of those people. But recently I've just bought a lot of books that, you know, I certainly like, and I hope you guys like too. Um, if, if you've read any of these or have any comments or anything, um, opinions about the books, let me know. Send me a message um, and, and let me know what you think. I hope you guys like these. Bye.